how do you get out of your own way? How do you get rid of the negative thoughts, the the pattern of negativity where you can't think of ideas or you lose that edge of creativity for a certain amount of time? I know I've experienced it. We're literally experiencing it right now, which is why this is going to be an interesting topic. Andrew Perrin, how are you this morning, buddy? I'm great. Uh, besides the struggle here that you're you're talking about, <laughs> which uh, I had that struggle with my stream. And, you know, you, you get some momentum going. You guys all know what I'm talking about, right? You get some momentum going. You're feeling good. You're going strong. And then something happens. It's just like something, whether it's something that changes your mentality or um, let's say you get discouraged from a day where like you ha you have people come into a stream or something and then just the tech stuff just didn't work out and so you lost them. Or maybe something in real life, uh, you know, something happens where you can't quite focus as much on your creator, uh, your hobby, job, whatever you're gonna make, whatever you're making this into. Something happens. It's that like X factor that tries to pull you away. How do we, how do we, stop that from stopping ourselves we have an article for this ross you, you pull something we do we well it's actually more of a blog and it's an it's an interesting one because there are some good things in here and i'm sure there's going to be some things that we disagree with and we'll link it as always it's from positivityblog.com and uh essentially it's how to overcome negative thoughts which essentially is one way of looking at how do you actually get out of your own way because one thing that is true among literally every i think living being is you are able to accomplish so much more than what you think you are and i don't say that from a go get him tiger you know effect i say that from a literally we wash ourselves with negativity on a daily basis we're constantly consuming uh negative tv my god look, every time you go on the internet now it's just report after report of coronavirus world war three i mean this year has been you know i'll say it for me it's been one of the most challenging years to handle uh just from a personal perspective so i imagine if i'm in that case everybody else is so the key becomes is how do you get out of your own way literally and the number one thing that they have on this list a lot of these are going to seem very obvious but it we need to say it because if this helps one person literally get out of their own way so they can go back to doing what they love and get back in that rhythm into that pattern of being positive then it's worth going over so uh this first one is when you're in what seems like a negative situation find what's good now obviously parent that is so 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 much easier said than done to be able to realize oh this is a really shitty situation hold on I'm just going to stop real quick and observe the positivity in it. I mean, do you think that do you think that's even possible in the moment? Or is this something that once the moment has passed, you need to stop and you need to go back and address it? And this is obviously a really challenging personal personal skill that that you would have to work on and develop. Right. So when everything is kind of going to shit uh, or let's say I think in your life, it just seems like it's kind of not working out whenever whenever things have a momentum towards the negative. What do you hold on to uh, in your own mind that allows you to persevere in the opposite direction? What what is that thing? What is the thing that uh, I guess gives you hope? What is that? What is the thing that tells you I can do this creator journey? I, I I've got this. What what is that thing? Right? Is it somebody else um, who you can relate to that is also sharing those struggles, but is persevering? Is, you know, is, uh, is someone who is inspirational? Um, th is that something that is helpful? Or do you look at other things that uh, you believe in that make you happy? Um, we try to provide an example, but for me, I guess, personally, uh, you know, when I look at all the bad things, I always get excited and, and hopeful about what we're doing in space. And we just, uh, yeah. again, launched men of, from America onto uh, into this into space with a rocket that's now reusable. Um, they made it just fine. There were like no issues with their mission at all. Um, and I got to I got to see that um, happen live. And I always get excited about the progress that's going to occur on that route. Um, and that makes me hopeful uh, and, and that that things uh, that good progressive things can happen. And that makes me look back towards my own life and say, okay, you know, despite all these th things going on either in the world or in your own personal lives that are attempting to hold you back, I've still 
got these great things that I've accomplished. Like, for example, uh, with my stream, I've still got a couple people coming in there every day, hanging out with me, which is more than I had before. And I'm doing this kind of side experiment for you guys so that I can talk about uh, Facebook gaming and restreaming and stuff. And I'm going to have some cool stuff to talk about with you soon, but we need AWOL in here for that. And we might, we probably won't have him again for the rest of this week until next week, hopefully. So there's going to be a lot of great stuff to tell you guys going through that experiment. And that makes me excited. That makes me excited to go through that experiment and I'll have really useful stuff to tell you guys about Facebook gaming, uh, restreaming with restream IO, um, and all this other stuff. So I look forward to that because I know it's going to help you guys in some way. Um, so I guess Long story short, I'm kind of rambling all over the place, but it's a good ramble. I look forward uh, the things that I like. I look forward to like the the you guys watching the digital drop pod and um, this uh, that hopefully the stuff that we're learning and that we're investigating and researching helps you. And I, I get we get validated by that in our comments sometimes, especially on the YouTube channel with on what you guys are saying there and how what we're doing is helpful. In fact, there was a comment. And I don't have it pulled up. I'm sorry. I just remember it because it was it was pretty important. And it was along the lines of, uh, you know, there's a lot of other people, uh, creators, giving advice out there that's actually demotivational. Um, and I think it made a lot of creators believe that uh, maybe creator being a creator is not for me. Maybe I don't have what it takes. Uh, maybe it's not for everybody. Um, I really think being a creator is for everybody. Uh, I. Now, not necessarily the kind of creator that gets millions and legions of followers, but in our last episode, or last that we covered, we, what did we talk about? We talked about, you know, it's, you only need 100 true fans now, really, yeah. to, to be one, right? So, because every person is unique in the world, we're all different, uh, we've all got something that makes us interesting. Everybody's got something that makes them interesting, right? If you, and everyone's got something that they can use in the, with that interestingness that they can create with. Um, that doesn't mean we are all creators, but I do think we all have the capacity to be if we so choose. And for that reason, I think, uh, you know, we've been reading this comment. I think they were demotivated. Um, and, it, and it sounds like by listening to our podcast, they were motivated again um, to, to create because we we've been talking about how to tangibly solve problems um, that you're having. And it's not necessarily that you're just not cut out for this stuff. Sometimes there's there's just some minor roadblocks that you guys got to figure out and think and problems are solvable if you break them down. And especially if you tackle them, not just by yourself, but with a group of people who's maybe helping you. And maybe that's what we're doing here. I don't know. <laughs> Something along the lines. I mean, you go back and you think about the, some of the greatest creators that we've seen over the past 10, 15 years, or even if you go back even farther and look at some of the greatest athletes, you know, greatest politicians, um, greatest civil rights leaders. They were at all, all at one point told, you know, Hey, maybe this isn't for you, but they were able to keep pushing because you have to realize that part of the process is learning. You can't sit down and go to a website and have it all figured out after one go. You can't, you can't go listen to our podcast and be like, Oh, I listened to an episode. I'm good to go. That's not how it works. You have to continue, continue to keep learning. And one of the things that they actually brought up a good point in this argue in this article is when you're in what seems what a negative situation, find what's good. We've already established that's incredibly difficult. But one way to do that is to pretend that it's your, it's your best friend, kind of what Perrin was alluding to. It's your best friend that is in this situation. How would you tell them to react to it? And 99% of the time, you're not going to be telling your best friend, well, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe it's time to find something else. No, you're going to encourage them. And so you have to live with yourself all the time. So you might as well treat yourself like you're your own best friend and just continue to encourage and motivate yourself and do that with whatever way possible. Uh, number two, reminder, this is a difficult one, but I actually agree with it, Perrin. Reminder, people don't care that much about what you do or what you say. And I think this is this is a tough one because in our own lives, we are one of the most important people. We're at least top three in our own lives, most important people. So we take what we say very seriously, but the hard reality is, especially when it comes to streaming, especially when it comes to trying to establish your opinion, if you're a new creator, uh, it's, you have to, you have to remember that for a long while, they're actually not, going to really care about it. 
you have to give them a reason to care and seeing that negativity when you're not getting the kind of engagement that you want or you're not getting the comments that you want uh that can lead you down a negative path of maybe i'm not cut out for this and then you have to also go and sit there and look well i've only done like 10 15 videos or something along those lines even if you've done a thousand videos we've given examples on this show before of creators at uh, Ruicon who how many videos did he do like 2000 different videos before thousands. he ever thousands. yeah before he ever hit it and now he's he's on his way to becoming one of the biggest creators he's a fantastic dude deserves every bit of it but that's just a solid example of you know be free with your opinions the fact that people don't care as much about your opinion is what you think they do should open the door for you to be more expressive with your opinion. Why not? What do you have to lose? I think this kind of goes into uh, a whole other kind of realm of, and, and this is a way of living. I think this gets easier as maybe you get older, um, but don't care so much about what other people think. Like, obviously you got to care as a creator, the people watching you uh, get, get their feedback, talk to them as human beings and, you know, kind of try to deliver value with your content. Um, in some way, but also, I mean, what people think of you, how you look, uh, what, what you said, maybe you said something kind of like that you, that may have been misconstrued or other people are say is stupid or whatever, what they say and think ultimately doesn't really matter a whole lot either. It's, it's so what you're saying, what you say, it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it's also what other people say too. Um, it, it's the same way around and it shouldn't affect, it, sh it doesn't need to affect you a whole lot. Right. Like this can happen if you get online and trying to do the creator thing and you get trolled. You just get someone in there and they're just hating on you. And that's, that's what trolls do. And they do exist. And you're going to have to deal with them, right? Um, and like, don't let them get to you because what they're saying doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't. Like you keep doing what you're doing. And the, the people whose opinions of, of you and what they think of you that matter are the people that you love and care about and whose opinions that you respect. Those are the people, right? And that kind of brings me to another one. And I don't know if this is on the list yet. Maybe I'm getting ahead of it, but having a support system, uh, which by support system, I mean having other people that you can share this creator journey with. So you're not trying to do it all by yourself. People that you can bounce ideas off of, right? Let's say you have an idea for your channel. You're going to start changing stuff up but you're not sure if it's going to like hurt your current following or something like that. And you just need to talk to somebody about it first. Don't try to do this all by yourself. There are communities out there um, for this type of thing. And also your friends, right? Um, try like, if you can try to find a community and we've got, we're kind of developing one in digital drop um, podcast here. We've have a Facebook group that was useful for this, but I think we're going to be moving to discord soon. Uh, but also just in the comments of this cast too, and in our YouTube community, if you don't have anybody else, uh, we're here, but try not to be doing this all by yourself. Try to share the journey with other people. Try to sh that way when you are having trouble and you are feeling discouraged, you really mostly just need to talk about it with somebody. And I feel like at that point you're going to be help look gratefully helped and, pushed in the right direction. As long as the people you're talking to are good friends, they have your best interest in mind and you know them well enough. Um, and they're doing something kind of similar. They have a little, at least a little bit of expertise, expertise in the same, in the same area. Uh, so support system, I think is important. Do they happen to have that one on the list for us? They had something similar and it was, uh, just essentially talking, just talk, you know, t talk about your issues, put it out there and talk about it. But what you're saying is that is an incredibly good point. And uh, we are, I, we got to pull up a discord. We're going to create a community of our own. But if like, if you need one right away, the, a really, really good example of one is actually AWOL's discord. I love going on and reading that you have creator, you have major creators in there, but then you also have a lot of small creators and everyone is bouncing ideas off of each other. You know, no one's, ex no, no one expects the big creators in there to know more. Nobody expects the, you know, the smaller creators to know less because everybody has an idea that, you know, could potentially help one another. It's a great community. There's no competition whatsoever. It's just a shared pattern of, um, of, of creators getting together to bounce ideas and, and get and get past these situations like we're talking about. So yeah, that that's very real. Uh, the, the one, well, gosh, we're already almost done here. Uh, not with the list, but with the actual 
timing of the show. Uh, one that I do want to get into real quick, and then we actually have a Facebook question for you, Mr. or a Twitter question for you, Mr. Perrin. Cool. Uh, but number four on this is replace the negativity in your surroundings. This is something that I've learned uh, recently, and it's um, inc- incredibly important. One of my favorite things to do in my downtime, and I, that's usually only at night, is literally to just go on Facebook go to local TV stations, websites, and just read the comments because for, you know, for a long time, I thought it made me feel better about myself. I could go and say, well, at least I don't have this person's opinion. And you know why that may be true. I was also doing nothing but funneling negativity into my life right before I went to bed. So I'd wake up the next day, just miserable. Like, why am I just feeling awful right now? And as soon as I did, as soon as I stopped going and checking out and just surrounding myself with negativity, even if I thought it was funny, I did it for my own entertainment, man, my life has gotten so much better. Um, what kind of, have you made an effort parent to maybe like stop getting on social media more or to, you know, kind of just remove the negative things in your life that maybe you didn't realize had such a negative impact on your life before. And then you did afterwards. Yeah. I mean, this happens, um, pretty constantly, right? I, I, I sometimes feel like life is, a uh, constant thing of trying to weed out all the negative stuff and it's a it's a if they're like weeds right they grow back and then you got to trim them again um you know this happens with like the news i can i can consume news and politics for a while and then i got to take a break focus on other things in life there are other things in life you know there there are things i'm pushing for there um i I, working on yourself uh something or maybe a recommendation is wherever you are doing work or wherever you are doing creativity keep it clean Take a look around and look at your surrounding workplace and look at it. Do you, you, you are in this place a lot. You're going to be creating this place. Are there things that make you feel negative about it? If so, address them and take care of them. Sometimes even taking care of things that physically represent negativity, maybe they're not inherently negative. Like let's say dust. Let's say like there's a bunch of dust on your desk or something. Some things that can be physically negative, they don't, aren't necessarily like really wearing on you or being negative by solving those in a symbolic way, you can kind of remove some negativity. Let's say there's some negativity in life. You really don't necessarily have control over. And this does happen, you know, doing that kind of symbolic cleaning and maybe help. I don't know. That's just a personal thing for me. Uh, that sometimes if I'm feeling stressed or negative, you, I can just clean and uh, especially my workplace. And then I feel a lot better about it. Um, that's an amazing feeling after yeah. cleaning. Oh my it, God. It gives you the feeling of accomplishment. Um, yeah. it, it improves your environment, which environment's very, in a very important factor. Um, and, uh, it, it can help it cl- like also just clear out your, your ability to just think about creating, um, instead of in the back of your mind having, Oh, but there's all these problems that I got to solve, or there's this thing I got to do specific later, or maybe you've got anxiety, um, elsewhere. Uh, we, you know, we all have anxiety and we all deal with it in, in different ways. So I'm by no means a therapist. That's just something that works for me. Um, yeah, you should be, <laughs> uh, you no, should I, be a therapist. I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I just know some things that work for me. Um, and cleaning is one of them. I've seen it work for other people too. Uh, that's yeah. a great point though. Literally that's, that's literally the definition of getting out of your own way. If you're literally, if you're sitting there focusing on a problem, <clears throat> excuse me, you can't get to the bottom of it. So you kind of switch tracks on your brain, you go and clean and then just kind of trust yourself to solve that subconsciously. Oh, you just, you just reminded me of like the, the best answer to this whole thing of getting out of your own way. And and I, I've, I've kind of had this as a life tenant growing up and I've told it to other people and it's been helpful advice to them. So maybe it would be helpful for you guys. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the solution. <laughs> you Ooh, don't get anywhere by ooh, focusing on the one. problem. You don't get anywhere. All you do is build up more anxiety. Don't focus on the problem. F- find a solution and focus on that, right? Then you will actually be on a road to taking care of it or doing something about it. Ooh, that's sharp. That's a good one to end on. But before we end, we do have a question from uh, Joe Lewis at Shades of Joe. I like that name. That's creative. He says, I looked before I leaped when making a Facebook ad, and now I have a couple hundred quote unquote followers that are just click farmers. Have I irrevocably harmed my engagement? I was a level up creator before I began the ad campaign. How do I create ads that avoid this pitfall? Mr. Perrin, do you have any advice for this? You were, you're, you're the Facebook ads expert. 
by far. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like knee deep in this testing right now for uh, Facebook. So you've got a bunch of click farmers. If they are spamming your comments, just block them um, and block them from your page. As you see the comments come up, if, if you don't want them there, you haven't damaged your page in any way, really. Um, so just re uh, if you can just ban the ones that are, sp if they're spamming anything like that, otherwise I wouldn't worry about it anymore. How can you advertise your page um, as a level up creator? Well, uh, what I'm beginning to find, and this is a bit of a spoiler for what our future episodes are going to talk about here, is that you, you you really can't. There really is no advertising um, that's going to really grow you in the direction of a Facebook level up creator right now. Uh, Facebook has actually gone through and re-engineered and changed their platform to completely rule that out. So the about the only thing it can do is uh, get you enough page likes to get to the minimum requirement of a uh, level up creator, which it sounds like you already have, so that's not an issue. Um, so for now, I wouldn't worry about spending your money on Facebook advertising, and I will, I promise I'll get more into that uh, when we have AWOL back on the show. We're gonna talk about that because he's been doing some testing too, and we need to both uh, bring our results to you guys there. But my suggestion, stop spending money on it right now. Right now, Facebook advertising is not directly correlating with positive results for level up creators. Yeah, and he actually has a really good question too, uh, because I remember when you guys were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, I was kind of thinking, I was like, okay, well maybe the worldwide targeting isn't necessarily a good thing. I've seen a lot of comedians do that too, where all of a sudden they'll target, you know, and I don't say this to be negative, but like the third world countries where, you know, they can get clicks for such a low price. And meanwhile, they've got 200,000, you know, likes on Facebook and are getting, you know, three or four engagements per post. And then they're sitting there questioning, like they're, they're trying to show off, like I got all these followers. It, it it honestly doesn't matter. The level of engagement is what's going to matter on any social platform. And so, the, so for you focusing on that, that's the first question you come to is engagement means you're already on the right path. And uh, like they said, we'll get back to you with some more information. Uh, Parent, any last things you want to add before we hightail out of here? Um, no, uh, just to say, so a uh, little bit of Facebook nuggets there today. I want to clarify. I know in the past we said there, there is a Facebook advertising strategy that works for Facebook level up creators. That was a 2019 strategy. We've been finding as we've been updating our research this year that that is no longer true. So if you guys have followed our advice on previous casts and if you are advertising, if you found successes that's working for you, by all means do so. But what we've been finding is that's not the case. So I would urge you to um, stop, stop advertising spending if you are doing it, uh, unless you're just doing it to learn and, and test. Uh, there are obviously Facebook advertising strategies that work for pages, but right now for gaming pages specifically is what I'm talking about. Hold that off. We will come back to you with an episode when AWOL is back, likely early next week. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys can tune into that one. Yeah, we're learning along with you guys on this journey. So any, any advice we give you, especially when algorithms and everything are involved that are constantly changing, as we know, we're learning along with you and we're just talking about it here. Uh, so essentially, yeah, listen to Perrin, put a pause on your uh, Facebook advertising if you're trying to grow a gaming page right now and then take a re-examine it and uh, we'll get back with you next week because I know AWOL has some really good results as well. Uh, and I, I don't know if by good he means like informative or just shit didn't work. They'll be uh, either good way. Bad. They'll be good. Be, bad. <laughs> they'll be good. All right. Awesome. Um, you can catch all the replays of this show on YouTube. Just search Digital Drop Pod. You can catch the audio version literally anywhere that podcasts are available from iTunes to Google Podcasts to Spotify, iHeartRadio, blah, blah, blah. Hit us with a good rating on there. We really appreciate it. And we will be back tomorrow morning with more Digital Drop Podcast. Shoot us your questions on Twitter at Digital Drop Pod, and we will see you tomorrow.